In chapter 23, we look at organic mechanisms, the way organic reactions happen. The first type of reaction is substitution reactions. First, we need to understand what a mechanism is. It's a detailed step-by-step -step description of how an overall reaction occurs. Studying mechanisms can allow us to maximize yield of product while reducing the costs as much as possible. They show us detail on bond breaking and bond formation in order to show the rearrangement of electrons. Other information uh, for you is that a mechanism must take into account all observed facts about a reaction and may be adjusted if new facts are discovered. So it's not something that's set in stone, it's open to be reviewed and changed. A substitution reaction is a chemical reaction in which an atom or group of atoms in a molecule is replaced by another atom or group of atoms. An example of substitution um, is the chlorination of methane, um, where one of the hydrogen atoms in methane is replaced by a chlorine atom instead. A key word that you'll see a lot is free radical. You need to know that the definition for a free radical is that it's an atom or molecule with one free unpaired electron. Um, you will recognize these um, as it will be the symbol for an element and a dot. That's how a free radical is presented. Homolytic fission is a substitution reaction where electrons are shared when a bond is broken. So each product is identical and ends up with one of the electrons from the bond that was broken. Here we can see that molecule AB has been split up into two free radicals um, and each um, element A and B, they have both taken one electron from the bond over here. The single headed arrows that you see here um, are used to show the movement of one single electron. The first example we will look at of substitution reactions is the halogenation of alkanes. This is where a hydrogen on an alkane is being substituted for a halogen. Um, so the example we're going to go through um, is the chlorination of methane, so adding chlorine to um, methane, but it's the exact same procedure no matter what two atoms you're given. Step one is always initiation, starting the reaction. And what's going to happen here is the homolytic fission of a chlorine molecule into chlorine free radicals by ultraviolet light. Um, so you can either write out what's highlighted in blue or you can show the equation um, like I've done here as well. So key things to look out for is that you're using single headed arrows to show the movement of one single electron and that you put UV light um, in there as well. So it's the UV light initiates the reaction. Um, other things that might help with your understanding here, um, any reaction that is um, using UV light is a photochemical reaction. Each chlorine atom takes one electron producing two identical free radicals. Step two is propagation part one. Um, this is where the chlorine free radical that we produced in step one attacks an alkane molecule. In our case, the alkane we're talking about is methane. And what it does is it forms a bond between the chlorine free radical and one of the hydrogens from the alkane. Um, and that is hydrogen chloride. When we see HCl, we automatically tend to call it hydrochloric acid. HCl is only hydrochloric acid if it's aqueous, if it's dissolved in water. And this is the one place in your Leaving Cert exam that if you call HCl hydrochloric acid, they'll dock marks from you. And we also produce a methyl free radical. 
So methyl, because it has one carbon in it, um, and we've got the dot here to show that it's a free radical. Additional notes, propagation means to keep the reaction going. Um, one free radical in this step is used to produce another free radical. So the chlorine free radical from step one um, undergoes a reaction and produces another free radical. Free radicals are very reactive and they don't last very long. So a key thing to note here is that it's a very quick reaction time. And um, in the length of time I'm taking to explain it, this would have happened millions of times. Step three is propagation part two. The alkyl or methyl free radical in our case um, attacks another chlorine molecule to form a chloroalkane molecule and a chlorine free radical. So you can see here that we have now um, got a methane molecule that has a chlorine atom on it. So the chlorination of methane has happened here now. But what we've done um, in propagation part two is we have produced another free radical. And from the last slide, we said free radicals are very reactive. So by regenerating another one, we're setting up a chain reaction here so that the propagation part one is going to happen again. And then that will cause propagation part two to happen again. Um, so this is a chain reaction here. Um, to help with your understanding or an additional note is that when you're explaining this, the free radicals always do the attacking because they're very reactive. Step four is termination, so finishing the reaction. Um, this is a combination of the remaining radicals to form molecules where the reaction ends. So that the, re the radicals um, uh, react together to form a molecule, not forming another free radical. So in our case here, we had the chlorine free radical and we had the um, methyl free radical. So there's three different ways that these free radicals can react. You can have, firstly, the two, or two chlorine free radicals reacting together to form a chlorine molecule. You can have one of each type of um, free radical react together to form a chloromethane. Or you can have two of the um, methyl free radicals reacting to form ethane. And this third one tends to be the one that people forget about. So the products that we get from here, we are going to have some um, chlorine molecules left over at the end. We, this is the product we're looking for. We want to have... Um, the chlorination of methane happening. So we want um, a chloromethane group, but we also have the potential to produce some ethane here as well. Um, so just to summarize that, to put it all together for you, the initiation is the start of the reaction where um, chlor a chlorine molecule is split up into two chlorine free radicals by UV light. Propagation, there's two parts for this um, where the free radical attacks a molecule and produces another free radical. So that then is very reactive and is going to cause the reaction to keep happening. A chain reaction is set up. You'll notice that I've added in a little note here that your propagation, they start with a free radical and they end with a free radical. Your termination, when you have used up um, a lot of your reactants, your termination step is where the free radicals react together to form molecules. Um, so there's a couple of options there. There's always going to be three options there for your termination step. 
The only other one that you can be asked on this is the chlorination of ethane. So what I would like you to do now um, is stop here and see if you can um, draw out the different reactions that happen for the different stages of the chlorination of ethane. When you've that done, we'll go on to the next slide, then you can carry on and check your answer. Step one is the initiation, the breaking down, I've forgotten to put in UV here, um, the breaking down of a chlorine molecule into two chlorine free radicals. Propagation, so we're going to be um, using a chlorine free radical to attack an ethane molecule which is going to produce an ethyl free radical here. That ethyl free radical is going to then attack a chlorine molecule and that's going to produce our um, chloroethane and another free radical. And that propagation step is going to set up a chain reaction that will happen over and over again. Termination happens when these three reactions could occur, um, where the free radicals react together to form molecules. The mark scheme for a question like this um, is here for the different steps if you want to go through your answer and see how many marks you would have gotten. The evidence for this mechanism. Um, unfortunately, you just need to learn these off. Um, so you need to know at least three pieces of evidence for the mechanism of the chlorination of alkanes. So the evidence for the free radical mechanism. The first one is the use of ultraviolet light, even for a very short period of time, causes a chain reaction. So the UV light initiates the reaction, starts it, but even if you take away that UV light very quickly, the reaction is still going to go ahead. And that is used as evidence to say that the reaction must be proceeding because of the formation of very reactive free radicals. The second piece of evidence is the formation of longer chain alkane molecules. There's no reason for longer chain alkane molecules to be produced in this reaction unless we're producing free radicals. Remember in our termination steps, the long chain, longer chain free radicals are only produced because we have two alkyl um, free radicals reacting together. The other piece of evidence is that these reactions are sped up by the addition of a known source of free radicals, such as tetraethyl lead. So if you add something that has free radicals to this reaction, it will speed it up. Um, and so that goes to show that this must be a free radical um, reaction. There are, however, limitations to these kind of reactions. Um, these reactions can produce many products due to the high reactivity of the free radical species. Um, so in these ones, we're looking for the chlorination of an alkane. So all, the only product we want is a chloroalkane. However, you saw that we were getting at least three products in the two examples that we went through. Um, so there might be some waste here. And also for this reaction to happen, you have to supply energy to it. Um, so we had to supply UV light, that's energy. We had to supply energy to it. Here are some questions for you to go through to recap your learning from this video.